Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you wherever and whenever you're watching. This is online worship for First Christian Church in Sullivan, Illinois. This is our worship gathering for the last Sunday of July 2021. It's July 25th. We're continuing our series today, long story short, as we work through uh, the Old Testament and eventually into the New Testament. And today we come to the Psalms. So we'll get to that in a little bit. But first, I want to begin with a couple of announcements. Let me introduce myself in case you've not watched in a while, you're watching for the first time. I'm Pastor Grant, the pastor here at First Christian Church. We have online worship gatherings every week. Uh, They're available via Facebook or YouTube or our website, wherever is most convenient for you. We do worship in person on Sundays at 10 a.m. We continue to welcome new people and welcome other people who haven't been in a long time since the pandemic. So uh, always great to reconnect with people and to connect with new people on Sunday mornings. We have Kids Church available for children in grade school, so that's available for the duration of worship. We also have nursery care for those who may be younger, and that's available as well. Uh, Looking at uh, upcoming events in the life of the church this week, uh, a relatively quiet week. We have a board meeting in the parlor. Uh, That's on Wednesday at 6 p.m., so board members make note of that. Ladies of Faith will be meeting Thursday at 5 West, So uh, any ladies are welcome to join them at 10 a.m. And then on, I guess that's it, looking at uh, the list of events, nothing else to add. So let's uh, take a few moments now, spend some time in prayer as we center ourselves and as we quiet our hearts and minds for worship. Let's pray. Generous God, giver of all things, we rest in your loving and tender care and we are revived, restored, and renewed by your strength and encouragement. You go before us in life, leading us in pathways that are secure without the confusion of becoming lost, aware only that we always need to follow you, and so we trust in your guidance and wisdom. As human beings, we know there will be times of stress when our body or mind lets us down. We know that there will be dark times too, when life seems to be nothing but struggle. And it's in those moments especially that we rely on your presence deep within us to guide us and bless us. God, you are the one who gives grace. You provide us with the tools we need for the tasks we face. And for this, we give you our trust and our thanks. God, you are the one who puts out the welcome mat for us as we gather to worship you in this online space. You nourish our souls and bodies through your goodness and tender mercies. You heal our life's wounds, and your generous love fills us to overflowing. You give us an honored place at your table and invite us to stay with you as your guest forever. You have promised that your unfailing love will stay with us always, and for this we give you our thanks. Be with us now in this time of worship. May it be pleasing and glorifying to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite you to follow along with our call to worship and then join together in a song of praise.
As we come to a time of extended prayer, it's important for us as uh, members and friends of First Christian Church to be in prayer for one another, to lift one another before God, to support one another in any way that we can. And so we keep a list up to date here at the church that we send out each week with our prayer praises and our prayer concerns. And we would love to add your prayer praise or prayer concern to that list if you'd send it along to either I, Grant at FCCSullivan.org, or Julie in the church office. You can find her email address on our website. And we will keep that list up to date, and we will be in prayer for one another. And we will lift our praises to God with one another as we have things to share and celebrate. I don't share any of those things during this video simply for privacy reasons. But I would invite you now to share those aloud wherever you are if you would like. And then we will spend some time in prayer together now. Gentle Shepherd, thank you for the way that you have led us to green pastures and still water. You've shown us beauty this week that has fed our souls. The brilliant green of the budding trees glowing in the morning sun, the delicate symphony the birds sing each morning, the caress of the warm sun on our upraised cheeks, the fragrance of lilac in the evening. Some of us have walked through dark valleys this week, and all of us know someone in a dark valley, valleys of sickness, grief, 
uncertainty, fear. You meet us there in the darkness. You protect us. Our enemies are present in our lives, forces that would take us away from you. Pride, envy, hatred, selfishness, all played out on individual and corporate level. We need your help in our lives. You have heard the concerns of our hearts that were spoken, spoken just a moment ago. And you hear the concerns that are unspoken, the ones which weigh too heavily for us to share. And so we call on you for help. Guide us carefully. You have provided for our basic needs this week. Thank you for the food we've eaten, for the luxury of variety in our diet, for the joy of cooking, for the clean water that comes out of our taps. You anoint us with oil. You gift us with grace, providing unexpected blessings over and over, encouragement and new strength when we falter, tender compassion when we are spent. Goodness and mercy is following us all the days of our lives. We give thanks for this good life, for life and breath this day, a day to praise you and thank you. We do indeed want to stay in your presence forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today, as I mentioned earlier, comes from the Psalms, and it seems most appropriate today to spend time in the 23rd Psalm. It's a Psalm that many of us know very well, but not one that I've preached on a lot. And so today seemed like a good time to really dive in and dig in here. So I'd like to share with you the 23rd Psalm, and I'm going to read it today, not from the New Living Translation as per usual, but from the King James Version. So listen now and hear the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God add blessings to the reading, hearing, and understanding of this word today. As a pastor, I've rarely been part of a funeral service where the family has failed to ask for this psalm to be shared. When I ask about a favorite scripture, this one is always the go-to, almost always. And as a matter of fact, I think that it is kind of just assumed that the 23rd Psalm is always a part of a, a funeral service. I remember it being one of the scriptures that we memorized in Sunday school when I was a child. Songs have been written, stories told, and movies produced to bring this beautiful, peaceful, and reassuring images of this psalm to life for us modern-day people who have probably never tended a flock of sheep. I don't personally know any shepherds. Maybe you do. I, I don't know. And green pastures around here are usually filled with cows, not sheep. Yet when I sing or hear the words, The Lord is my shepherd, the visions I have that, that come with the words are always full of peace and free of fear. Well, different translations of this psalm, I think, have added to its beauty and meaning as if it needed any help. I usually read it from the King James Version as I did for our gathering today because there's just something about it that's, that's so beautiful, so majestic, I suppose. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. There's something so peaceful and there's something so, so beautiful about that. But I don't speak that way in my daily life. I doubt you do either. Well, for the past few years, I've tried to read various translations of the Bible. And I really like how the contemporary English version of the Bible, which was completed in 1995 by the American Bible Society, I like how they render this scripture. 
So listen to Psalm 23 with, with new ears as I, as I read this. You, Lord, are my shepherd. I will never be in need. You let me rest in fields of green grass. You lead me to streams of peaceful water. You refresh my life. You are true to your name, and you lead me along the right paths. I may walk through valleys as dark as death, but I won't be afraid. You are with me. Your shepherd's rod makes me feel safe. You treat me to a feast while my enemies watch. You honor me as your guest and fill my cup until it overflows. Yes, kindness and love will always be with me each day of my life, and I will forever live in your house, Lord. I think that translation is so powerful because it talks in a way that, that I can relate to. I found another one by Eugene Peterson in his book, The Message, which is, in his words, it, it's a translation, a paraphrase. It's con contemporary language, even more so. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Isn't this beautiful? Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk by my side. You revive my drooping head, my cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Scholar Walter Brueggemann in his book, uh, The Message of the Psalms, he begins his commentary on this psalm with these words. He says, it is almost pretentious to comment on this psalm. The grip it has on biblical spirituality is deep and genuine. It is such a simple statement that it can bear its own witness without comment. It is, of course, a psalm of confidence. It recounts in detail by means of rich metaphors a life lived in trustful receptivity of God's gifts. He goes on to say, it is God's companionship that transforms every situation. It does not mean that there are no deathly valleys, no enemies, but they are not capable of hurt. He says, Psalm 23 knows that evil is present in the world, but it is not feared. Confidence in God is the source of a life of peace and joy. I love Dr. Brueggemann's comments, and I have discovered in my own life that, that God's gifts are best understood and experienced when I fully trust in God. But for the next few moments that we will spend together, I, I want to reach forward in our scriptures, and I want, I want to tie this beautiful psalm together with a parable parable of the shepherd of all shepherds. Jesus shares this in Luke chapter 15. He tells us about a shepherd who realizes that one of his or her sheep has gone astray. The shepherd leaves the flock to go look for the one that is lost. You see, Jesus said in his parable, they were in the wilderness, not safely in the fold. This makes the story even more incredible, for this means that the shepherd left the flock in danger to go look for the one. Well, it's, it's kind of perplexing. One pastor shared a story about this that, that I want to share with you. It's pretty amusing. Her family was camping out in Colorado, and she says, We were driving over Trail Ridge Road one day. We were seeing rainbows dance from ridge to ridge in those majestic Rocky Mountains. She says, we were watching snowflakes fall as the sun turned them into crystals of great beauty. When all of a sudden we came upon this lush green flat pasture and there in the field was a flock of sheep. She says, <clears throat> I hit the brakes, threw everybody in the car out of their seats. She says, I, I grabbed my camera, I ran across the road and began acting like a tourist as I snapped pictures of those white sheep against that awesome green grass. 
She says, Then I looked out in the field and saw at a distance the shepherd. Now, mind you, she says, he didn't look like a Christmas card. He was sitting on the back of a covered wagon wearing cowboy boots and a cowboy hat, and he was strumming a guitar. This sounds kind of funny. She says, as I was observing this pastoral scene, suddenly out of my peripheral vision, I realized that a little lamb was nibbling its way toward a deep ravine in the earth. She says, I began to holler at the shepherd, pay attention, look, here, look. But then all of a sudden, she said, out of nowhere came a dog. He circled that flock and went straight for the little fellow in danger. He nipped at his heels. He barked in his face and he just forced him right back to safety. She says, it was then that I understood what Jesus was telling about the 99. She says, the shepherd could go off and look for the lost sheep because the shepherd had a good dog. Well, it's, it's interesting, the experience she had and how she connects that here. That reassurance that God can be trusted in every situation takes on a meaningful twist. The question becomes, can God trust us? You see, I believe that each one of us is symbolically a, a watchdog. The good shepherd depends on on us to keep watch over his children and the flock represents all people everywhere for we are all sheep in his pasture now certainly many of us will have the skills and the gifts of perceptivity to go and bring persons who have put their heads down and just nibbled their way into danger we'll know to bring them back into the fold but I believe that all of us, all of us must keep watch over the fold. How many people do we know that have wandered away over the past year and a half or more? They didn't mean to get lost. Maybe we just weren't paying attention. We were focused on ourselves and there they wandered. Maybe we didn't call them when they were sick. Maybe we didn't take the time to run by the funeral home when they lost a loved one. Maybe we didn't send a congratulations when they received a promotion or when their child excelled in school. You, you know what I'm talking about. We've been so focused on our own lives that some people just wandered off. Maybe they felt uncared for. Maybe they felt insignificant as a part of our church. But the truth is, no one is insignificant, not in our eyes, and especially not in God's eyes. So we come to these words again. The Lord is my shepherd. He leadeth me. He restoreth my soul. He offers me green grass and fresh water. But the question in life remains, can God trust me to be a watchdog? Perhaps we need to ponder that question also. In the New Interpreter's Bible, the author comments on Psalm 23 <clears throat> with these words. They say, to be sure, it is appropriate that Psalm 23 be read and, <clears throat> and heard in the midst of death and dying. But it may be more important, however, that this psalm be read and heard as a psalm about living. For it pits daily activities such as eating and drinking and seeking security in a radically God-centered perspective that challenges our usual ways of thinking. You see, for me, the Jesus of the Gospels is the good shepherd of my life. He sits me down. He has compassion on my hungry spirit. He leads me, feeds me, helps me to rest and, and be refreshed. And then he looks in my eyes and whispers, Now take up your cross and follow me. God and God's Son, Jesus, can always be trusted to be with us, to, to guide us, and to give us rest and peace when we need it most. But the question remains, can God trust us to go and seek the lost and to watch over the fold? I believe that God can. I believe that we are a church that loves people and cares about all people. And so as we continue to emerge from this pandemic, I would encourage you to take a few minutes today to think of who you can reach out to, to help watch over the fold. Who haven't you seen around here since we've been back together? Who are you missing in this online space that just might need a reminder that, you know what? They are loved and they are missed. Let's pray. Gracious God, the question is, can you trust us? And it's a hard question for, it's a question that we must each attempt to answer day after day with how we live our lives. 
So often we pray that you will take care of us. We tell you of our needs and we do trust you, Lord, but how many times during the day do we fail to become the answer to our own prayers? We pray that the hungry will be fed and we don't share. We pray that the naked will be clothed and yet we don't go shopping. We pray that the homeless will find shelter and instead we, we lock our front doors. We know, God, that too often we have just passed these concerns on to you in prayer. And we've never been stirred in our souls enough to realize that we are the watchdogs. That you trust us not only to bring back to safety those who are in danger, but to go out and to find those who are truly lost. So forgive us for in so many ways when we go on failing you, in so many ways we go on reciting this 23rd Psalm without ever trying with all of our hearts to live it out. Let this be the day, Lord, that we become trustworthy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we come to our time of offering, we reflect on the fact that our offering time on Sunday mornings is symbolic for us. Yes, we give here and now to support the work and ministry of this church, but our giving goes so far beyond just a short time on Sunday mornings. It's about how we love and give and serve other people in the other six days of the week. Let's take a few moments now and pray over our offerings. You are welcome to give your offering through the mail, online, or when you're here in person. Let's pray. God of love, you abide with us. You provide for all our needs and guide us in your ways. Out of gratitude for your care, we bring our gifts before you. Use them for your work of caring, that all may feast at a table of abundance. All may walk without fear and drink deeply from the cup of compassion. Thank you for the many blessings we have received. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we come to our time of communion, I encourage you to have elements prepared. It need not be bread and grape juice, but this is an important part of our weekly worship together. Christ is perhaps more readily known in brokenness than in wholeness. In the breaking open of the intact tomb, we realize Christ is risen. With wounds still visible, the risen Lord appears. In the breaking of the bread and the fruit of the vine crushed and poured out, emptied, Christ is revealed as present and able. This is Christ's table, not for perfect people, but for those whose lives are fragmented, crushed, utterly reliant upon God's grace and Jesus Christ. So come to this time of communion, not because you are able, but because our Lord is able to raise us up and hold us fast, even when all life falls apart around us. You are welcome to partake of the elements that you have gathered at any point during this next song. Oh, my home. 
Thank you so much for being present for worship today. We really are glad to be able to provide this online worship gathering and are glad that there are still many of you out here participating and watching and experiencing and feeling the love from this church family and from our Creator. As we go forth from this place today, let me offer you some words of blessing. May the blessing of God fall on our community. May it be a safe place full of understanding and acceptance where you can be as you are, without the need of any mask or pretense or image. May this place be one of discovery, discovery of the love of God, the peace of Jesus, and the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, where from the clay all can emerge to deepen and refine their knowledge of God's kingdom. Go in peace today. Amen. <laughs>